Percy Jackson and the Olympians, doesn't have a history of lightning strikes on the screen. Two critically panned film adaptations of Rick Reardon's best-selling kids' books series Minus, The Lightning Thief, 2010, and, Sea of Monsters, 2013. Minus greatly disappointed fans, and the author, and sputtered out at the box office. A decade later Disney Plus is trying to right the creative and commercial wrongs of the movies with a new TV series created by Reardon himself, along with producers John Steinberg and Dan Schatz. Percy Jackson and the Olympians, streaming Wednesdays on Disney Plus, premiere episode is also on Hulu. Out of four, certainly lacks the glitzy Hollywood makeover the movies gave Percy and his two main companions, casting age-appropriate actors. It also keeps the scope of the story distinctly down to earth, well, when it's not on Mount Olympus. The resulting series has already received a great deal of advanced praise from book fans, but every TV show based on a book, comic or video game has to stand on its own. Percy doesn't have quite enough substance and panache. Confusing, with jagged pacing and an over-reliance on novice young actors, Percy just doesn't quite click. It strides for epic but ends up far more ho-hum. It might delight devotees and young kids with a twinkle in their eye, but unlike the best children's media, it's unlikely to draw in the parents stuck watching it too. Percy Jackson Walker Scoble, as a 12-year-old outcast living in New York with few friends and a lot of strange occurrences in his daily life. One day Percy discovers that he's no normal tween but in fact a half-blood demigod. All that Greek mythology he learned about in English class? It's all real, and now monsters like Minotaurs and Furies are after him. Percy's adventure takes him to Camp Half-Blood, a summer camp full of surly, superpowered, part godly adolescents. He's barely settled into his new life when he is given a mandatory quest to stop all powerful gods like Zeus, Poseidon and Hades from going to war, and might just help him rescue his mother. With his friends, or frenemies, Annabeth, Leah Jeffries, daughter of Athena, and Grover, Arian Simhadri, a mythical satyr, Percy sets out for the wilds of, well, rural New Jersey and the other unseen magical parts of the regular world. If it sounds like a lot to take in, it is. And unfortunately the series does a poor job explaining it all. The pace, particularly of the first three episodes, is all wrong, with the momentum of fight scenes, prepubescent outbursts and exposition sessions by emotionally distant adult authority figures starting and stopping jarringly. It's as though Reardon and the other writers were unsure where and how to split the story up into the series' half-hour episodes, so chose beats at random. The story hardly seems to have begun, and then suddenly you're halfway through. Without a firmer background given to the audience, Percy struggles to create effective stakes.